All right, getting ready to start. Okay. So in this live master class, I will be talking about self-care and mental health. Um, I'm going to define self-care and give you examples of how to take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Let's tag some people here. So let me let me just get started. So we have the definition of self-care. So self-care. Hi, Yasna. Self-care. So again, let me go back. Masterclass on self-care. And we're going to talk about self-care as it goes mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Self-care is so vital. So definition of self-care. Um, activity that you intentionally, intentionally, do to take care of your mental, physically, emotionally, and spiritual health, okay? Intentionally means that you actually take the time to plan and to schedule for it, okay? You have to actually make time for self-care. All right, self-care relies um, on increased self-awareness, being, uh, being aware of yourself. Um, it can helps, ben that's how it benefits people with dealing with mental illness. Actually, it helps be benefit all people because you're learning to be self-aware of what's going on with your own body, with your own mind, with your own, with your own soul. Just you all together, being self-aware. Now, one thing. This is one thing I always had a battle with when you're dealing with self-care. I was. I always thought self-care was selfish, and it's not. You're not being selfish. If you give all, if you give your all to everyone, your tank is going to be empty, and then guess what? You have nothing for yourself. Um, I can honestly say for years, I would put other, everyone else's needs above mine. And then frankly, I became stressed, depressed, angry. And then I'm going to be honest with you. At some point in your life, you'll reach the tipping point. And I know I have where you decide personally, or your body is going to decide that you need to start taking better care of yourself. So that being said, we are going to, hi, Shannon. We are going to delve right into this. All right, so let's talk about mental. So I have some tips on, hi, Katina. I have some different tips on how to, okay, let's work first through mental. So avoid toxic people. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. Avoid toxic people. Sometimes it's friends, sometimes it's family. Social distancing, this is a great time to social distance yourself away from toxic people. And you might have to block them on social media, but if they're, in, uh, if they're harming your mental state you need to avoid toxic people and block them um take a guilt-free nap and what do i mean by that not just a regular nap i'm talking about just let everything go let all the guilt regret everything and just take a nap really rest challenge your negative thinking a lot of times we have so like our negative our our, our self-talking within our mind is trash change that Change your thinking to where it's more positive. Um, practice saying no. This is so hard. I know this is so hard for me. You want to please everybody. But at the end of the day, if it's not really benefiting you, if it's not, if it's stressing you out, maybe you need to just not just just say no. Let's practice together. No. And guess what? You, you're going to be all right. Your friendship is going to be all right. You don't always have to explain when you say no. Again, again, this is something I um, I have difficulty doing, and I'm 44 years old. Say no. Um, doing a workbook on mental health, like for mental health, really to work out some things that you're dealing with mentally. Mentally, so a workbook. How about change up your routine? Sometimes we get so caught up in doing the same thing over and over, day in, day out. That gets boring. Change it up. 
Change up that routine. Try something new. Try something new. Sometimes, again, you get tired of doing the same thing over and over. Like, okay, for instance, I love to cook. So now, um, being the only vegan in the house, I, be, I try cooking different meals for myself because I get tired of cooking the same thing. Um, I, I, I go on YouTube. I look up Tabitha, Tabitha Brown and her recipes. And guess what? I'm trying something new. Read a book. During this quarantine, you should ha you have time to read a book, a book of interest, a book that is really going to really stir your interest. Um, I started reading this book, and it was like a page turn to y'all. It had suspense. It had it had love. It had everything that I would want in a in a book to keep me as a page turner. So again, find you a book, meditate, meditate. I beg, meditate. Um, this is really hard for me, but I've gotten to where I can do it 10 to 12 minutes a day. Again, my mind is all over the place. And just to take the time to just be still and just be self-aware in, in what I'm trying to do before. And I try to, um, I meditate in the mornings before my day even starts. So again, take that time to really, um, be self-aware and to slow down. Try a new hobby. I talked about that. Maybe like okay, I'll give you a perfect example. I love doing nails. So one of my hobbies is doing acrylic nails. And I have and I take the time to really it, I've been doing, doing it my own nails for about three, four years. So yes, um find you a hobby. I know my next door neighbor, his his hobby is working on motorcycles. So he's in the garage working on motorcycles a lot. Find you a hobby. Um, I, in the beginning of the, of the master class, I talked about scheduling. You're going to have to schedule your me time. Just like you schedule time to eat and you schedule time to go to work, schedule time, schedule yourself into your own calendar for your um, self time. Um, the last thing dealing with mental is reward yourself. Now, I ain't going to lie. My, one of my favorite things to do is shopping. Um, I consider when I shop on Amazon as a way of... Uh, I think when I get the gifts, it's like Christmas every day when you get a gift. But yeah, um, Amazon is my, again, my way of rewarding myself. Um, adult coloring books. Um, I have an adult, my husband bought me this adult coloring book. And sometimes instead of at night, put the social media away, I pull out the coloring book and I just take the time and just color. Adult coloring books are really relaxing. How about goof around? I know I'm the serious type. I'm really serious a lot of times, very stoic. Um, but there's moments where you got to just slow down. You got to slow down. My husband just said a package comes every day. Yes, yeah, it's about right. <laughs> I look forward to hearing the doorbell ring and, and an Amazon package comes. Um, one thing also is to identify your triggers um, and warning signs that, that when you need self-care. Like identify those triggers so you don't pop off on people. Identify those triggers. Um, another idea is to listen to a podcast, do something spontaneous. Typically I, I am pretty much spontaneous, but, um, I'm just talking about if that's not really your thing, practice being spontaneous. Okay. Today we're just going to take a drive. I'm like, where are we going? I don't know. Be spontaneous. Um, unplug technology for an hour. I'm going to honest with you. This is really hard for me because I'm, I know I'm constantly on my phone doing work, um, doing business things but yeah let that phone rest how about it's actually they um studies show that you should let your phone rest like put your phone away for an hour before you go to bed anyway so again let that's a form of self-care right there take a mental health day um i know a lot of people are still working and you need some time for yourself so again during this time really if you can take a day off and just a day for you just to go away somewhere and just really take the time to really focus on you. Those mental health days are so um, critical. Create a to-do list and actually to help you clear your mind. If I don't have a to-do list, y'all, I'm, I'm a scatterbrain. I have to every morning, I write down, after I meditate, I write down exactly what my goals are for the day. And my goals are to try to knock all those goals off. And if whatever I don't accomplish, I roll over to the next day. But I have a plan. I have a plan. 
So again, that's another form of self-care, making sure you're not going to uh, miss something that important that you need to do. Um, another one is declutter. Declutter and clean up. During this springtime, um, I was able to finally clean up my closet and organize it. I still, have, I still have some work to do, but now I can actually walk in and actually see the clothes and not trip over anything. Okay. Hi, Amber. And um, which is a, is a big thing, is a big thing. So um, another thing I was able to do is I went into my cabinet with all my spices and I organized my spices. So take time to declutter, take time to clean up and straighten. And it's really, that is a form of self-care. I know it doesn't sound like it, but it is. How about make a playlist of your favorite music and for your current mood? So I had, I know I had different playlists for different things. I have a workout playlist. Um, when I'm running, I have a running playlist. I have a elliptical playlist. I have a playlist when I'm doing my meditation. So if there is, I have a chill playlist. So sometimes just listening to music and, and be able to turn on that playlist. Okay, if I'm feeling down, let me turn on a happy playlist. Just to it, um, increase your mood. Music is so calming and great to change your mood. Um, and then the last one is dealing from mental is start a journal. I know my therapist, he mentioned that. Write down your thoughts. Journaling. Go back to journaling and it helps you release um, your thoughts and emotions. All right, now going into physical. Physical means of self-care. Yoga. Yoga, y'all. There's some like if you if you don't feel like yoga is um, a great stress relief, try it. Go on YouTube and find you a, and also you can do modified yoga. There's such thing as a chair yoga. If you feel like you can't hold those poses for a long time, but yoga is a great um, way of self care. Um, of course, yoga with yoga, there's stretching, some deep breathing. I, I, and I know I do deep breathing when I am doing meditation. Go for a fast paced walk. I love to walk every day. Now, when it's cold and rainy, then, then I might not walk. But again, a fast paced walk, even if it's just 10 minutes, that helps. Uh, that's a form of self care. Um, stay hydrated. Water. Yes, drink some water, stay hydrated. Um, that can be linked to fatigue if you don't drink enough water. Hello, Nelson. Um, a lot of times we're not hungry. A lot of times we're just dehydrated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, drinking water, staying hydrated is a great way of self-care. Along with the physical, dealing with working out. Work, sometimes you need to work out. A lot of people work out sometimes just to work out emotions. They had a stressful day and they need to go to the gym. Hi, Nelson. And they need to punch out all the aggression and anger, whatever they're, all the frustration they dealt with for the day. Or they get on that elliptical and they got to work at all the frustration. So sometimes working out, exercise is a great way of self-care. And I know personally, yeah, you might not want to work out every day, but I'm telling you, you get what's called a runner's high. When I, when I run or when I go work out, at the end of the workout, is a you get this rush of adrenaline and um you feel better so yes working out is a is, it is a form of self-care um another way physically to a, a, a form of self-care is massage um, my husband just bought us this new massage it's like a massage little gun and like we can use that on each other to really work out all the kinks in our back and everything when you're 40s i don't know what what's going on but i swear we need a massage all the time especially since we can't go to massage right now but Yes, a, a deep tissue massage is really great. Hey, JR is a great way of, of self-care. Go hiking. I, um, I'm a country girl by, and, by heart, and I do love to walk in nature. Um, but go hiking in nature is such, it's so relaxing. And it's also it's a great form of exercise, but it's also a great form of safe self-care, being in, out in nature. Here's one, scream loudly in a pillow screaming sometimes we bottle up so much pent up emotion how about y'all need to scream let that out let it out in that pillow you got to scream cry just let it out that is form of self-care again we hold in so much we got to let it out we got to let it out and sometimes it has to be in a pillow or whatever it is you might need to go when i go walking sometimes sometimes i might be screaming i might have to scream ah get it out 
pent up emotions are, are, are it's not good for you dance i'm a dance teacher so you know i love to dance love to dance okay dancing is a great a wonderful form of self-care through all my ups and downs i can always turn to dance and that has truly helped me to um be more self-aware and to sometimes re just release all my emotions through creativity so dance yes it can be and it doesn't always have to be creative sometimes it's zumba zumba is a great form of stress relief um you have a lot of dance videos that you can find on youtube dance dance it out um sleep in again like i said it's it's really hard for me just to like woosa and just but on saturdays or certain days sleep in as much as you like at least once a week try to sleep in and get that rest that you so so need another thing is use a form of foam roll, roller and you can go on youtube and find um exercises for that but that's a good way of massage and really getting out those little kinks that you may have in your muscles um try not to stay in the bed too long you want to make sure you get up and get ready and be prepared for the day and it usually by doing that it'll help you it really will help you get um organized and get and have a better day if you have a, a plan of action acupuncture now i'm personally i've never tried acupuncture and uh let me see jay said um uh, roller skate oh my gosh roller skate and i forgot i love to roller skate too but i can't wait till they open up but yeah i love to roller skate too jr um acupuncture my mother um, did acupuncture to help with smoking and guess what she has not picked up a cigarette ever since she had acupuncture so i know acupuncture works so eventually i know one day i want to try out acupuncture um one day because acupuncture can really help um with a lot of different um elements that you may have um i think i already touched on this but cooking healthy meals again now i used to never want to cook y'all that's just wasn't my thing but now i love to cook okay cooking healthy meals and i also like to bake too i'm getting i'm thinking of making um some oatmeal cranberry banana cookies i just need to go to the store and get some cranberries because like you notice when the bananas get all brown and nobody wants to eat them okay i'm gonna I'm, what i not, now i'm starting to do is bake oh okay jay said um i should start like get some skates and like roller bait outside i should definitely try that I'm gonna have to get padded up though, because I don't want to trip and fall and bust something. So I'm gonna have to get me invest in some pads. Oh, Amazon, I'm gonna go on Amazon and get me some pads. I'm gonna be like a 44 year old running around with some pads, but I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need knee guards. I'm gonna need some elbow guards. I don't know about the helmet because that you know crushes my hair, so I don't wanna do all that. But definitely the knee guards and the elbow guards. If when I start roller skating. All right, now let's go into emotional. Emotional self care. Do something that makes you happy. And if you don't know what's make, what makes you happy, then you really need to do some self-aware, some self-reflection to find that out. Find that out. What makes you happy? Um, one thing also, you should also look at what you put on, out on social media. Is it positive? Is it negative? Try to change what you post on social media. Again, is it all negative? Is it all positive? Are you venting? And um, yeah, really look at what you post on social media. Um, I talked about adult coloring, repeat positive affirmations. Now, this is really good. I do, I do positive affirmations after I meditate. Um, define new goals every week. You should have goals. If you don't have, if you don't write down your goals, if you're not trying to achieve your goals and what, what, you, what's, what is life? What are you doing with your life? Okay. Have some goals so you can meet them. Again, write, write, write. It can be journaling. I spoke on journaling, poetry. Um, how about create a inspirational collage or Pinterest? Go on Pinterest. I love Pinterest. So I, I like to make Pinterest um, boards. I also have a vision board and I always, I have it right above my bed so I can wake up. Hi, Crystal. Um, I can wake up and um, really it keeps me focused because it's like, okay, that's my goal for 2020. I know 2020 has been crazy cray cray okay but still try to be focused on like because i have that vision board in front of me um i really and makes me stay focused todd mentioned the less stress you have the better you sleep this is so true when you go to bed stressed 
you're sleeping. I know for me personally, I'm rolling. I'm like, it, it just, I, I just don't sleep well. And if you don't sleep well, the next day is going to be awful. You're just not going to be as productive. You're going to be sleep deprived. You're going to be a little cranky. Hi, Crystal. You're going to be a little cranky. So, yeah, really get your sleep in. If, if you can stay stress-free or work on trying to alleviate that stress in your day, then guess what? You it really, really will affect your sleep. Um, another thing is allow yourself to express your emotions in a safe in a safe, appropriate environment. So journaling, if you can't go to a therapist and journal, and then also had, had um, Darrell, make sure that you, um, a, a therapist is really good or a tr true trusted friend that you know is not gonna tell your business. Mm -hmm. True trusted friend, therapist and journaling are really helpful in alleviating some stress. And if you can speak to your spouse, if your sp a spouse is really helpful in being a listening ear, then speak to your spouse, but really, um, Again, if you don't have someone to listen to, journal. Get that out of you. Do something nice for someone without expecting um, reciprocation. Do something nice without expecting anything in return. Um, giving. Those are great ways of self-care. Um, refrain from being overly critical of yourself. Have you noticed you're your worst critic? You are your worst critic. I could have done better. I could have did this better. Oh my God, why did I wear that? Why did I say that? Stop being so critical. We only have one life. We're not perfect. You're not perfect. So stop being so critical. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. Most people really don't care about that, what you say and what you do as much as you think they do. Most people are really self-centered and they only care about them and their family. So what you do and what you say, they really don't care about anyway. So stop being so self-critical. Be more of your, be a more of a uh, supporter of yourself. We got to be our own cheerleaders. Hi, Michelle. Unfollow or mute toxic people. Now, um, I did talk about blocking toxic people, but also I didn't talk about unfollowing. You might need to unfollow, block and unfollow on toxic people on your social media. If you look on your social media feed, Facebook, Instagram, and all you see is negativity, all you see is venting, all you see is drama. Those people might need to, um, you might need to block them or unfollow them because you don't need that negative energy. I'm telling you all, just reading all that and just seeing all of that affects your, it affects you. Okay. And it affects your physically, affects you mentally, affects you emotionally. So yeah, let, let go of all that. You might need to unfollow and block. Um, do something created to release fear, anxiety, frustration. Those, all of those emotions always keep us from achieving what we need to achieve in life. It, it'll keep you um, stagnant. It'll keep you in your comfort zone. So you have to attack the fear. You have to get over your anxiety and you have to get over that frustration. Keep moving. Keep pushing forward. Again, do something creative. I know personally, I would love to start gardening. So like I have a list of things. I have so many lists. One thing I would like to do is gardening, but I'm so analytical. I'm going to look at, okay, how would I garden? How would this work out? I don't want my plants to die. Because a lot of times I don't water my plants and they die. So I have to be very careful to make sure that when I start gardening, I want I want my plants to, to flourish. I want to be able to eat what I grow. So, um, and that's something on the creative side. Um, another thing my, uh, my husband put in here was consistency. Um, so self-care is something that you can consistently do actually every day. You all know that? Plan just like you plan to go to work every day, just like you plan to brush your teeth and take a shower and all that good stuff. Plan to do something for yourself every day. Don't, don't, um, just, just because it shouldn't just be a once a week thing. It shouldn't just be a once a month thing. It needs to be every day. Take care of yourself every day. And at the end of this, um, at the end of this call, when you look at mental, spiritual, physical, emotional, find something every day to do for yourself, and you'll make you feel so much better. Um, another thing um, for emotion is write a letter to someone who's hurt you, and then burn that letter and let it go. This one is deep. Now, if there's someone who's hurt you, and you um, are not at that point, nor or it's just not a good thing for you to actually give that letter to somebody. And it's probably not meant for them to have anyway. Write it out 
and then burn it. Let that, let all that go, okay? So I keep going back to writing and journaling, but it's so cr crucial. I, I, as I've gotten up in age, I didn't realize how much journaling is a great way, it's very therapeutic. All right, spiritual. So we're going into spiritual now. Reflection. Now, as a teacher, we are taught to reflect on our lessons, reflect on um, our daily plans, and really look at, okay, what does this work? Did my students really, were they, my students really engaged? Was I engaged? Reflection. Take the time to reflect every day about your, about your daily activities, about your life in general. Spend time in nature. Again, I love to walk outside. I love to feel the sunshine on my skin. Um, not so much walking in the woods, so to speak, but like um, spend some time in nature. It's, it's funny growing up and like watching my mother tend to her garden, tend to her plants in her yard and how, how so therapeutic that is. Me and my dad love to, um, we just laid some um, mulch in the yard and then um, I put some lights down. And then um, I noticed how my flowers, my re reoccurring, they're called hostas, and how they come up every year. I look forward to seeing those hostas come up every year. So again, get into nature. Um, regular acts of um, compassion. That's another spiritual thing, pay it forward. I remember one time I was in the Chick-fil-A line getting food for my family and someone paid it forward. Someone paid for my meal. I was like, Okay, so I pay for the next person's meal. That those little acts of kindness, they stay with you. So pay it for high brock. Those little acts of kindness, they they stay with you. So pay it for it. Um, reading an uplifting book. I love reading self help books, but sometimes you just need to, and you don't always have to read. Sometimes you can do an audio book. A lot of times when I walk in, let's say about forty five minutes an hour, and I'm walking, I want to, I'm listening to a uplifting audio book. I'm listening to an audiobook. Hi, Brock. What's up? Um, silence. Now, I'm not saying being silent to your partner, but I'm just talking about take a moment to be still in the moment, not talk. Sometimes people talk too much. Sometimes we it's too much chatter. You need to be silent. Be silent in the moment. Prayer. Prayer. Sometimes you need to take the moment and pray. Okay. That is definitely in, up there um, in the spiritual side of self-care. Meditation. I spoke on meditation, but meditation is up there. It's really good. So um, as I end this, let me wrap up by saying, again, this masterclass, again, I was talking about um, I define self-care, how it is not selfish. It's something that you need to do daily. Um, I gave you a ton, a buttload of examples, um, how to uh, do self-care mentally, how um, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I want to thank you, everyone who um, who watched this live feed of my third masterclass. I plan on doing more like every Thursday. I have um, another one I want to focus on on mental health. And the reason I'm focused on mental health this month is because it's Mental Health Month, month of May. But um, again, this is really true to my heart because it's something that I really have difficulty myself doing. I have difficulty slowing down. I have difficulty just taking care of, like just wanting to take the time to 30 minutes, five minutes, just taking, um, just slowing down and taking care of myself. So this is something we can do together. Um, again, thank you for watching and that's it. Bye.